welcome to a very special flash Facebook Live. I know we don't normally do them on Thursdays at 10.15 in the morning, but um, we've had some requests from our listeners in Europe if we could maybe have some uh, every once in a while for them to listen to as the ones that we usually do on Tuesday are after long after they go to bed. So um, hopefully we'll get some of our European compatriots in this video. Um, today's guest is my friend, I don't use that term lightly, um, my buddy Joe Salcihai. And um, I'm just gonna do a really quick intro on how we met for the first time because um, I think it's really funny that it was basically up to chance. So there I was at my very first FinCon and lunch was approaching and I didn't have anybody to eat lunch with and I'm hanging out with um, Jeremy from Go Curry Cracker and he goes, hey, I have to go talk to somebody, but do you see that guy over there? And he pointed across the room and I said, yeah, and he goes, his name's Joe, go talk to him. He's really nice, he's really funny. I think you'd like him. And so I went over there and I said, hi Joe, my name's Gwen. And he's like, hey Gwen, hey, we're gonna go to lunch. Do you wanna go to lunch? And I was like, sure. And so we all went to lunch and we all had a great time and a friendship was born. So with that level of introduction, I don't know if we really know what we're getting ourselves into for this, but uh, welcome, Joe, to the show. Am I really here? Uh, are you really here? I don't know. That's a philosophical question for 10 to 15 in the morning. Right, right. Why? That's whenever anybody tells me that they, they like have a degree in psychology or philosophy, I always are say- Are we really here? Are we? Why? Who knows? Why? Hmm. Also, I would just like to point out that um, out of the two of us, I am the one wearing stacking Benjamin's gear. <laughs> I gotta get you. We've so we got this this cool swag designer Gwen, who mm -hmm. has made us some awesome stuff. We make like zero dollars because we pay him a bunch of money to make cool stuff. But we gotta get you some of those because we've got okay. some, we got some cool okay. new greatest money show on earth T-shirts. Uh, that one's funny. One that looks like a 1950s like scary movie poster. Yeah. Yes, yes, I'm all about that. Nerdery, financial nerdery. Um, well, we are in the right spot for some financial nerdery because we're going to nerd out big time in the next 45 minutes. Let's do it. All right. So, um, Joe, for those of the few people who have been hiding under a rock with uh, um, hiding under a rock with, you know, like the little ants and stuff who haven't heard of your show, can you do a very quick introduction beyond my this is how we first met thing. Right. Well, that is, that's all the introduction I need. I know Gwen. There it is. That's it. Done. Drop the mic. Yeah. We <laughs> don't. These mics are expensive. Don't drop them, please. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, no, about um, uh, I've been listening to podcasts for a long time. I was a financial planner for 16 years. I was also a media spokesperson for American Express and a company called Ameriprise, a financial company called Ameriprise. Heard that once or twice. Yep, and during that time, um, I did a lot of, I was on TV in the Detroit area for nine years, did a radio show, did a bunch of cool stuff. But uh, when I sold my business at age 40, because a friend of mine said that he was leaving and he said, quote, he had other mountains to climb. And I said, oh, that's, that's, that's pretty. And by the way, when he said he had other mountains to climb, he was being, he wasn't being funny. He climbed Mount Everest twice after that. And now he runs this adventure travel company. Literal and metaphorical. Absolutely, which was cool. I mean, really, it, it you know, uh, what's what's this thing money all about? It's about fueling our dreams and what we want to do. And he's like, listen, I really like this. Not yeah, exactly. There it is. Ready for the next adventure. There you go. There it is. Uh, my my uh, mug is a little different. I've got I've got uh, flower and garden. Show. Oh, nice. Uh, I will not. My next adventure will not be climbing mountains, so in the literal sense. We'll be going to Disney. It will actually, yeah. I'm going after FinCon. <laughs> Perfect, fantastic. But so I sold my business at age 40 um, and I thought I was gonna become a high school teacher and a track coach. Uh, and I started taking classes to do that and God bless teachers. But <laughs> it, it was but it was so frustrating because my best professors taught me you were going to be fighting administration all the time. In fact, one, one of my favorite professors said, he said, if you, have a problem in your classroom, take care of it in the classroom. And by the way, you have no teeth, right? You can't, you can't do anything, but make can't sure you can't even hit them care. anymore. What's up with that? <laughs> We're kidding. <laughs> We're kidding. But the, the, yeah, yeah. Yes. Yes. Don't they uh, 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 take care of it in the classroom because administration's never handled it the way you want. 
And at the same time, I started writing, like I'm writing newsletters for my friends that were still financial planners. I'm writing scripts for people doing television. I'm having so much fun doing all this different stuff. And then I said, you know, I should maybe have a blog. And I listened and people kept telling me, Joe, you should have a podcast. You should have what a podcast. What year was this? Uh, this was, uh, 1960. No, <laughs> it, was, it was, it was what, this was, uh, 10 years ago now. Um, 10 years ago, I'm doing that. And that's when the blog started, but it was probably okay. Okay. for the next three years, people said, Joe, you should have a, you should have a podcast. And I listened to podcasts since almost the very beginning because I'm a board game nerd and I love podcasts about board games. Yeah. Most people didn't even know podcasts existed. I mean, I didn't know that podcasts existed until like five years ago or something like that. I only knew because of this cool site called Board Game Geek, where people go and geek out about <laughs> board games. Only you would describe a site <laughs> as cool <laughs> as Board Game Geek. As this ultimately <laughs> awesome site called Board Game Geek. Yeah. So I went, uh, I was there and they started a podcast. So I started listening to podcasts. But people kept saying, hey, you should do a podcast. You should do a show. And I'm like, I have nothing to say. There's nothing that I could have said that wasn't already being said by Susie Orman or Dave Ramsey. I'm like, I don't want to be another one of those people. So, but then I'm mowing my lawn one day. <laughs> inspiration strikes, not in yes. the shower, but on and the I'm lawn. I'm listening to, yeah, the other place where inspiration strikes, <laughs> mowing my lawn. But I am mowing my lawn naked. But is that a, no, probably not. Uh, but as I'm, as I'm mowing, I'm listening to the show Car Talk. And these guys click and clack, people who don't know Car Talk, it's this NPR show that used to be on. One of the guys died a couple of years ago, but they still play the show. Spoilers. Because, yeah, sorry. If you're Literally. Wide, spoilers my, and by the way, while I'm at it, why don't I just tell everybody that Darth Vader is Luke Skywalker's dad. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't prepare our audience for this. Didn't want to ruin everything on one day. But the, uh, uh, so I'm listening to the show, these guys click and clack, and they're talking about cars, but I wasn't learning anything about a car. Like, I'm just having fun, and I realized nobody at the time was doing that with money shows. There wasn't one. And all of a sudden I thought there's this show that could be kind of like the tonight show where we have a lot of different segments. We have a lot of different stuff going on because I have ADD. You're the, you're the tonight show of financial podcasts. I'm the tonight show meets, uh, meets car talk of financial podcasts because we have no interest in people learning any. I mean, you know, really our show is based on the science of play. And because I like board games, I know a lot about the science of play. You get interested in stuff, not because it's educational, but because you're enveloped in it. And then it's you true. go, then you go find what you like. So, you know, we tell people on the show, don't, you know, if you learn anything, keep it to yourself. But, <laughs> but, in, but in real life, I'm just trying to introduce you to concepts in a very light way so that, hey, if you get something out of it, great. If you don't, did you have fun talking about money? Yeah, cool. So that's I made that's sure us. to tell everybody that we would have fun and that learning would be... Uh, side, yes. Side effect of this. <laughs> side benefit. Yeah, there you Absolutely. go. Because seriously, you are what you you surround yourself with. I mean, to to, to that point, the um, I didn't care about marathons and running that much until we moved to Texarkana, and then Cheryl, my spouse, joined this group of runners, and then I started running a little bit with them. And before I knew it, I'm running marathons, and I've run twelve marathons in the last ten years. And what it's is all, wrong with you? I, I'm sick. I've got these friends who do that, and so I do it. Okay, so um, this actually ties in nicely with a question that I got from a reader in the last you know, two hours when I threw this up online. Um, she asked, what was your favorite marathon that you've ever done? Oh, my favorite marathon? Uh-huh. Or yours? <laughs> oh, my favorite marathon is Bones on the TV. This is oh, this yeah, not, yeah. That's not funny. That's a good show. That's it's a great show. Though. I love Bones. Yeah. I, you know, what's funny is that I like, I don't even know her name, but I like that. I like Zoe Deschanel's sister better than I like Zoe Deschanel. Well, that's fair. Yeah. But anyway. Um, if I, I can't, why well, can't I remember her name? I've seen her name like 8 million times. It's really going to bother me. Anyway. I just, I just know she's Zoe's sister. That's all I know. <laughs> but she, she, that's, that's the depth of my knowledge, but, she, but, uh, my favorite marathon was in Maine runners world calls it the most beautiful marathon in the United States. So we went and ran it a couple of years ago. It's, it's called the Mount desert marathon, which is really, it is, it, it's, it's Acadia national park. You're running, uh... you're running around Acadia national park along the coastline. You know, you're and it's in the fall 
And so we're running oh, down beautiful. this narrow little street with all these beautiful colors uh, of leaves coming down in front of us. And we ran along this shoreline and there's like a, there's like a, a trawler right up against this, this uh, kind of cliff that we're running along. And there's a guy standing on top of the cab of this trawler and he's got his, he's got his little <laughs> megaphone thing out. Yeah. His little, his little whatever, and he's 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 shouting out to us, "Hey, guy in the green, fantastic! You're doing a great job. Keep it up." And another guy inside blows the trawler horn. I'm like, I've never been catcalled by a trawler while I'm running, <laughs> running a marathon before. It was awesome. Only in Maine. Yes, I would go back to Maine in a heartbeat. Yeah, it's beautiful. I was there for Labor Day a couple of years ago. I have friends that live in Portland, and uh, it it was beautiful. I. Can't describe it. I went out into island in the little in the bay there, and we rode our bikes around this bay. It was so beautiful. Well, you see these like growing up. I always saw these these uh, prints, right? That that they have like the Thomas Kincaid kind of things, mm -hmm. where you've got this beautiful inlet with some boats in there and the church steeple coming up through the trees. And you're like, that is so fake. It seems great, fake. and then and then you drive along the coast of Maine, and every flip in town is that picture. Town after town after you town. You forgot the lighthouse. Yeah, that's right. There's a lighthouse too. Yeah, you gotta have that. Always a lighthouse. Gotta have the lighthouse for the win. For the win. Okay. All right. Well, that's a pretty good marathon. Um, so you've how oh, how long have you been doing Sagging Benjamins now? Uh, in the some podcast. in some iteration, it's been around for six and a half years, but it didn't start off that way. Right. Like like anything, it started off as a show called um, Something Else, and then it was called Something Else, and then wow. we finally you had two shows called Something Else. I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't figure out why that name didn't sell. <laughs> yeah. Something Gee. else, yes. I, well, actually, I should be fair. The first one was called Something Else. The one after that was called Other Stuff, <laughs> and then we and then we had Stacking Benjamins. <laughs> Something's not selling about this name. Third time's a charm. Right, right. We were going to call it and more stuff, but Stacky Benjamins came around. But yes, in, in some iteration, it's been that. And the cast of characters has changed a little bit, um, and the show's changed a little bit. But uh, well, the show's changed a lot. But like Paula Pan's still with us from Afford Anything. She's been with us near the beginning. Len Penzo from LenPenzo.com has been with us since the very beginning. And um, yeah, yeah, it's been fun. It's a great cast of people. I've enjoyed my brief appearances on the show. We, you're, you're a favorite guest. Stop it. Which is why I've only been on twice. <laughs> which is, but you got to save it. I mean, you can't reach the mountain. <laughs> you can't reach the mountaintop every day, or you don't know what the mountaintop is, right? It's true, right? What was that? You don't know was happiness. That you don't know happiness until you have some sorrow. So. <laughs> You can only truly appreciate the highs when you've gone through the lows, right? There it is. So we build, we build up to the Gwen. So what does your vision look like for Sacking Benjamin in the future? How is it going to continue to evolve? I think, you know, what's funny is the longer we've done this, the more we've embraced the comedy of the show and gotten away from the financial parts of the show. Like when we edit, uh, contrary to our skeptics and critics, we edit, you actually for, do edit. We edit for funny. Uh, <laughs> and people go, wow, you should probably keep working on that. But, but we also, <laughs> you know, in studying the craft, I, OG and I, my co-host and I, we knew a lot about money, but we didn't know a lot about comedy and, and it kind of showed. And so now we take comedy courses. We take uh, script writing courses and we were like really trying to hone more for that, um, uh, uh, for the show to just continue to be fun and more fun. And you know what? The show got better when we, when we embrace that, when we say, yeah. you know, what? we really don't care about being a financial show. And don't get me wrong. When, when there's a fact and we don't know it, we pause the recording. We go make sure that we're responsible, that we say the right stuff. Like we have That's guests true. on the responsible, like Gwen. Um, we make Thank sure you. that it's, it, it's going to be, quality guests and a quality experience, but, but I'm much more worried about making sure somebody gets done with the hour and they immediately go like, I want to have a financial show that's bingeable, you know, don't yeah. you like yeah. at the end of the show, like I remember watching the West wing and Aaron Sorkin and company, they'd always end that with this dramatic music and this stuff and the show would end. And I couldn't wait for next week. And then luckily now we have, you know, Netflix and whatever. So I can just go right into the next one before I know it. 
three and a half hours have gone by and I finished the whole damn bottle of wine. Is it sad that I can't watch that show anymore? Why not? It makes me, it makes me sad to see that we have a, a fictional government that's more functional than the real <laughs> ones. <laughs> you mean where the, both sides work together? Yeah. And, they actually, and they don't get along all the time, which is fine, but they actually okay. come together with some type of consensus sometimes. That's crazy talk. I know. That's why it's fake fiction. News. Yes. More fake, fake news. news. <laughs> Yes. So yeah, so what are some uh, future projects that you've got in the works? Oh, so we What's did... coming up for Stocking Benjamins? Oh, I can't, nobody's watching this, right? Uh, we've so got we, five people, so we can't, we we're, can't. apparently we're in competition with Choose a Fi. They're live on like NBC, the local NBC affiliate oh, or something. So. Jonathan and Brad. Right, so thank you all five of you uh, for watching us prattle on instead of going over there and watching their live. Speaking of uh, Jonathan and Brad, we just had Jonathan on. This is the kind of stuff we want to do more of. Um, we we had Jonathan and Jen Hemphill, mm -hmm. uh, our friend from Her Money Matters, do this segment called uh, 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 Learning oh, yeah. uh, Spanish with Stacking Benjamins. And so so we, we gave Jonathan a very important phrase that is very popular in Spanish-speaking countries, which I don't know if you know this, Gwen, that phrase is, and it's, it's great if you meet Brittany at a fiesta, you go up to her, and this is what happens all the time in Spain, in Mexico, other places where they speak Spanish. They walk up uh -huh. to Brittany and they say, hey, Brittany, do you pay off your credit cards in full every month? <laughs> and, so, and so and so Jen, Jen says it twice, and then we, we had, Jen, and, and by the way, it isn't fair, life isn't fair. We're teaching Jonathan this, that life isn't fair, but we didn't, we didn't do a pronunciation guide for him. We just showed him the letters. <laughs> And said, say this. Hi, Ben, and Jonathan, buddy. And Jonathan actually did a better job than I thought he was going to do. He did really well. We had Devin Carroll. I he's from, practically fluent right now. Well, after one episode. It's amazing. Yeah. He yeah. finds Brittany. He's going to find out how much of her credit card she pays. We want to I do mean, more stuff like that. We had Dave from Tennessee. You know, we have these calls. People call in. This guy, Dave from Tennessee, called in. Don't know who he is. But he heard he recently missed. about all of these uh, reward point programs out there. I was thinking that he's told a lot of his friends that he's against that, but mm -hmm. but Southwest will fly a companion for free, and he told the misses that maybe they should get in on that. So he was wondering if OG and I think that um, <laughs> even though his daughter Rachel's pretty smart, he's got this friend Chris who's okay, that uh, if Dave from Tennessee could, should maybe start doing the reward point programs. Oh, look, Dylan is here. Choose a five oh. must be over. Dylan is everywhere. Dylan is everywhere. He apologized to me because he wouldn't be able to heckle you, but now I'm glad that he's here. So he's heckled. Dylan, Dylan is my arch nemesis. It's like, remember the old days of, of Seinfeld? No. He's like Newman. No, you didn't, didn't watch that. No. Well, anyway, Before Seinfeld had this guy. Whenever Newman came in the room, Seinfeld would go, Newman. <laughs> and Newman would go, Jerry. <laughs> so now whenever Dylan comes in, I got to go, Dylan. Just anyway, so Dave from Tennessee. Yeah, so anyway, so Dave from Tennessee called me. So if people that don't know what we're talking about, and by the way, that was subtle enough that um, our fans in our close Facebook group had no idea. They're like, somebody goes, Dave from Tennessee was hilarious. And somebody else wrote, they're like, well, Joe and OG didn't catch on to it. So apparently they didn't realize that they were being heckled. And I'm like, apparently our friends don't know that we might have written that. <laughs> It sounded so good. It's yeah, actually, um, quick side tangent. My uh, sister flies all around the world and um, has just recently started to embrace Miles. But um, she her, and her, her and her friend um, think that it's uh, a way of taking advantage of the poor, um, taking advantage of those that can't pay off their credit cards every month and get charged interest. And all of those are getting paid are, you know, it's going towards paying for the miles that the rich people who pay off their credit cards every month, like Brittany in Spain. Yes. Um, so yeah, they, they, they didn't like it. We had quite the philosophical discussion about whether or not it was ethical. I, I agree that credit card reward points are built on the back of the poor. <laughs> and I don't want to take advantage of the poor. Right. But, but I do want to take advantage of credit card companies that offer me a program and don't know about my spending habits. It's true. And don't know how I can take advantage of that perk and make sure they pay for it. 
Do you know that you're a deadbeat? That I'm I mean, a, I, I'm, it, I'm a deadbeat loser for doing that. Yeah, that's what they call the credit card companies call people who pay their bills off in full every month deadbeats because they don't earn them any money. You're dead to me. Yeah, and yet <laughs> they continually me. they continually give us more credit. Yeah. <laughs> They give us more and more credit, hoping that maybe the next time is the charm. Maybe that's the, I didn't know what you were doing with this. <laughs> I'm trying to form a D, but this is really do, difficult to do backwards. This is, this is a family show, Gwen. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to actually, accidentally like flash the white power yeah. sign or something. <laughs> next thing you know, yeah, we're uh, having a whole different show. <laughs> Dylan says he's not the only one calling Joe a deadbeat now. Okay, thank you. Dylan, <laughs> Dylan, damn it, Dylan. It's sad because when we were all together in Philadelphia, we, we had mm -hmm. this great meetup in Philadelphia and Gwen was there, which was I the was best there. party meetup. Obviously. And uh, I got to talk to Dylan for like two minutes. Dylan's that guy that I actually, believe it or not, Dylan, I want to talk to you. I do want to, I act like I don't. Oh, that's really probably like the nicest thing you've said ever. To Dylan? That's I was nice going to go ever, but you know, maybe. That's, that's the nicest thing. thing anybody said to Dylan. Let's be <laughs> <laughs> People don't say Same. nice stuff to Dylan. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> so, says, oh, you do love me. But we use this platform, and I thought I'd be able to see the comments too if I'm the guest, but I can't see the comments. So, yes, which means Dylan's going to write more stuff about me because he knows I can't see it now. I shouldn't have. Ha ha. You know who hasn't been, I have the power. You know who hasn't been on our show and needs to come on our show? We gotta have Jay on our, our show to tell her amazing story. You really do. I know. That's gotta happen soon. She so, can fit her in one of your slots that you know, the like ten slots that you have for guests nowadays. I think I'll talk to her um at FinCon about she that. She will be at FinCon. Hey, are we gonna have lunch on, on Friday still, one thirty? I hope so. By the way, welcome everybody to Joe and Quinn's calendar schedule. <laughs> I figured we'll this, have your attention. <laughs> this is great video. Hey, are we going to have lunch together? Well, you know, let uh, me take a look at my. Yes, yes, it's got to be late. Lunch. Okay. It's got to be late, but right. yes. yes. And if, it's as funny as, so. if it's as funny as last year, taking that awkward picture of Roger Whitney and Jared Easley. <laughs> Standing in line for the best burgers that I've had in a really long time. That was great. That Those was milkshakes, awesome. though. Heaven. Hashtag heaven. Seriously. Yes. I don't know which is better, having delicious burgers and milkshakes or squirting pho up my nose from laughing so hard at our first lunch. That, that I have to tell you, I went back there again to Twisted Root. So the oh, place is, is Twisted Root that we went to. In Dallas. Watching. And it was yeah. on diners, dive-ins, and whatever the other one, dash through, whatever. It's, a, what, it's a small chain now. They have maybe, I don't know, seven or eight of them mm -hmm. around. So I went to a different one. I went to the one in Waco, Texas. Which is where you go when you're out of other places to go. Yeah, where where, where is Waco? Waco? Like, is it like halfway there's... halfway between um, between Dallas and Austin? So yeah, so there's nothing else around. Baylor University is there, and it's really cool. It's up right up against the highway, and it's awesome. But Twisted Root is right across the highway from Baylor. So we stopped there on our way to Austin when my son was going to the University of Texas, and I had this shake thinking about how great the shake that was that we had at the Twisted Root. I had this shake called the Elvis Presley and it had oh, bananas oh, oh, oh. in it, which is awesome. Yeah. Did it have peanut butter? It did have peanut butter, which was really cool too. But the last ingredient and the one I discounted and I shouldn't have, it had bacon in it. See what happens when you discount the bacon? You can't discount the bacon. It was disgusting. I love I love bacon and every time I'm sipping along and this piece of bacon comes in my mouth along with the peanut butter and the shake and the uh, the banana you know not, he used to good. eat banana peanut butter bacon sandwiches right you did no Elvis that was his oh, thing uh, well apparently I know it now now I know because I had it it's how did you how did you not know that it was horrible. I, I, I don't. I can't know every. But I, I, I decided to know everything else <laughs> about everything. Well, I am a fountain of useless information. So That's the right. fact that I know what Elvis ate, I don't know that, what that says uh, about me. But this is this is random fact. You know uh, Sherlock Holmes. Yeah. Sherlock Holmes, the Sherlock Holmes character in the books, 
uh, they had a discussion about trivia and Watson was asking Sherlock Holmes about trivia and Sherlock Holmes didn't know something that was in the paper. And they're like, he's Watson goes, you know, everything about everything. How do you not know about that? He goes, your brain only has so much room and I have to save it for the important stuff. And whenever, <laughs> <laughs> whenever I don't know a fact, my brain says to me, goes, you know what? You were just saving room for the important stuff. And then I feel better about myself that I didn't know that. So, just, And you still forget your anniversary every year. I still, what, the, what anniversary? Oh, I got to go. <laughs> <laughs> I have never made that mistake. I'm proud. I did make the mistake one year of buying Cheryl. Cheryl said, do not get me a board game ever again. <laughs> and one year at the holidays, I have it all wrapped up. And it was meant to be, my kids were in on it. Like, we're like, oh, let's get, let's get mama. Like, we got her all the stuff she really would want. Right. And then we got her a board game because we thought it was funny. And we thought she was going to laugh. Little did you know. That is a joke that you should never do. You should <laughs> never, ever, when, when, when your spouse tells you don't buy me something and you buy it as a joke, it might be funny to you and to your children, but not so funny. Uh, Grudges, man. Well, and what's funny is, is she really likes that game. Like, I was just going to bias the game, but I thought, oh, how funny will this be? Not funny. And she still likes the game. And she still talks about how not funny that was. Um, Dylan says you should have your anniversary and B-Day set up this alert in your calendar. I should. So well, no. I, you never forget. I went one better, Dylan. That's what I he has to do to remember, because apparently his wife isn't as important as Cheryl is to you. That's right. I went better, <laughs> Dylan. I got a tattoo, like, right here. <laughs> Please, so, I don't want to see it. Some people, that's not the, that's not the, the best, best part of the video we've been at, we've been uh, getting ready for. Gwen's got the drum roll ready. I'm going to show you the tattoo. Some people, some people have a tramp stamp. I've got a Cheryl stamp. Right? <laughs> Cheryl, the, it's not in the same spot. So Cheryl's not <laughs> equated to a tramp stamp. Oh dear, <laughs> this is going downhill. Okay. So bad. Um, <clears throat> um, all right, I'm trying to figure out what other questions I have. Okay, so um, I was gonna say I want to ask you some questions. Oh, okay, fine. We can turn this around. You have any oh, yeah. questions for me? No, let's talk about the Fire Drill podcast. What made you you decide? Like all of a sudden, I find out that Gwen's finally doing a podcast, which is <laughs> awesome. The, yeah, but 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 so tell me that story. Um, so my friend Jay and I um actually Ooh. met online. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we met online through our blogs after we went to the Chautauqua. And so we became internet friends. And at FinCon that first year in San Diego, we were roommates on a houseboat that was the awesome party boat. And so we always had this really good relationship and we gel uh, one another. We have uh, complementary strengths and weaknesses. And so she was like, um, hey, we should start a podcast. It's the next big thing. And, um, oh, we lost Joe. Oh, hey. Do you like that? Sorry that bad. I ask, I ask you a question. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Email me the rest. <laughs> he just disappears. I don't have time for that. That just looks so rude. All of a sudden, my screen went black. I have no idea what happened. Uh, I did see a little bit of a hick, hiccup oh, in, uh, Ever, so who knows what happened? Could have been my fault. Who knows? Anyway, so my friend Jay and I, um, we are very complimentary to each other, uh, complimentary and complimentary. And um, she was like, hey, podcast is the next big thing. And if we we should work together and have a podcast. And I was like, nah, I don't want to do a podcast. And she was like, no, really, I think this is something that we should do. Like you could earn $5,000 a month from your podcast. And I was like, oh, really? Sign me up. <laughs> So she got you with the lie. She got, yeah, she got me. She she hoodwinked me. She got you with the lie. Nice she job. Got me with the yeah. lie. But hey, you know what? It's um, it's kind of like um, what is that scenario when um, you uh start liking your captors? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. It's kind of yes. like that, you know. Like I'm like, ah, oh, I actually kind of like doing this, and so we stuck with it. That and, is the um, real key to it, though. Seriously, I mean, not to derail this, but but that is the key. I, yeah. I found it's so damned addicting. 
And, um, and I find the process of creating a show is really, really fun and trying to make it better and hone it is really fun. And, um, I mean, and that's why I think that some people that have business podcast are a little misguided because I think they think that podcast are a place to like deliver facts and figures and get a bunch of clients and all this stuff. Right. And you're seeing those people leaving the podcasting space because it's, it's a great community and yep. storytelling platform. Yeah, Panoply is gone, and who else just got out as well? Buzzfeed. Buzzfeed, yeah, they just closed their podcasting wing down. Yeah. Um, yes, basically, Dylan, I got into podcasting just because I wanted to start being on Stacking Benjamins. No, she got in it to make a buck off Dylan. Yeah. Now that she's got the big Dylan money. <laughs> now that Joe, don't give out her business plan. Come on now. now. That all that Dylan money's flowing in Mertz's pocket. <laughs> so... <laughs> So yeah, one day we just decided, you know, we we're going to start a podcast. So then we did. Um, and Jay's been truly awesome. She's she's more like you. She's she's the the honer and the optimizer and um, wants to wants to make it better every time and figures out, you know, research and everything. And I just I like to show up and interact with people and, and talk oh, to people. OG. And, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Basically. Yes. I'm OG in this situation. And, she, and Jay is you. Yes. It's OG. Just a lot more here. OG just calls himself the talent. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, Joe's the show host. I am the talent. Yeah. There you go. So, um, yeah. So I've really enjoyed it. Um, I have over since we've been around for a year now, we have over 600,000 downloads, which is awesome. Um, so thanks everybody for listening. Um, except you, cause you don't listen, Joe. I, I, I've, you don't have time. It's fine. You're famous. Whatever. Um, <laughs> Backhanded. So I've noticed that um, my reach is drastically spread out. Like I can reach so many more people through this podcast platform than I can on just my blog by myself. And we're making a difference in people's lives. Like I can tell you off the top of my head, at least six people that we've started, they started doing things because they listened to them on the podcast and they took masterminds with us. And they've changed the course of their lives. Like one of them is going to earn over an extra hundred thousand dollars this year from his side hustle that he started from listening to us on the podcast. Like that, cool that, that altered the course of his family's life forever yeah. because of our podcast. Like Isn't that I wild? have goosebumps. <laughs> it is so wild. No, it's so fantastic. I mean, when somebody comes to me and they learned a new bad dad joke because of me, <laughs> like I'm like, that changed my life. I just get a little tear. Somebody's hey. like this uh, skeleton walks into a bar and says, I'd like a bartender. I'd like a beer and a mop. Come on. That wasn't funny. <laughs> hey, Joe, if a clown farts, does it smell funny? <laughs> oh, my God. We, we couldn't get through this without doing at least one bad bad joke. It's 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 going to go downhill. We should have had this yesterday. We could have done Talk Like a Pirate Day. I know. We already had all of our pirate jokes mapped out from Philadelphia. Dang. I know. I, know. I tried, but somebody was busy doing a different marathon yesterday. Whatever. Yeah. Eight somebody recordings yesterday. Recording like eight Just, recordings. Well, because of FinCon next week. We've got, right. uh, yeah. But anyway, we're on for lunch. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so I won't be able to be there, sadly. Um, I fly in Tuesday night, but you are having something very important happening Tuesday night. You want to talk about that a little bit? I'm, I'm nervous about it. We are headed to the Stop. Orlando Improv. No, seriously. Like, if you would have told me six months ago or a year ago that we were going to be playing the Improv, like, really? Really? That was That was really cool. So we will be – we're doing a live – recording in the Stacking Benjamin show. Mm -hmm. It has a lot of stuff that we can't do on the regular show because we're actually on a stage and we can do site based stuff. You know, it's like being on your podcast. You can't say, well, I caught a fish this big. <laughs> like nobody knows how big how, that is. How big that is. But we can do that. Now we can talk about fishing. That's the point. We, we want to have a whole show based on how big the fish were that we caught. No, we've got uh, Chris Browning for Popcorn Finance. is going to do his show. Uh, beforehand, I heard a rumor that our mutual friend Jen Smith uh, from the Frugal Friends podcast is going to be uh, one of his many guests. He's going to have several. Mm. 
And then we'll, we're going to do a 90 minute version of the Stacky Benjamin show. We've got a special guest uh, co host, Chris Costello from Bloom, who's hilarious. Nice. Really, not as hilarious as Gwen, but we couldn't get her because she couldn't be bothered to come. Because I'm flying at that point. I'll so literally that, be in the air when you start. Well, that, and your, your arms will be tired by the time you get there. But we, uh, we uh, will suffer through with, with Chris Costello from Bloom. And uh, we've got uh, uh, Paula Pant, Ellie K, uh, Bethany Bayless, I I uh, Andrew Wang, uh, Miranda Marquit, um, Josh Elledge, Eric and Wendy so, Nissan. You know, basically uh, all my friends are going to be there and I won't. That's fine. We, we've got this monster lineup of cool people. Oh, and this is really neat. So TIA is coming with us mm -hmm. and they're celebrating 100 years in business. And uh, as a cool nonprofit, I think they're cool nonprofit. But then again, I think board games are cool. You so. think board games are cool, so yes, yes. So, so your mileage may vary, but no, and they're interested. They're a cool, innovative company. They're one of those companies that are really disrupting the annuity space. You know, everybody says stay away from the annuities. Companies like Blueprint Income, TIA, doing great stuff there. But anyway, they don't want to talk about them. They've got this cool thing to celebrate a hundred years after this little known guy named Andrew Carnegie created them. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah some that? dude. I don't know, some dude in Pennsylvania created them. I like but books. They, they are, they are uh, celebrating difference makers in all the cities we're going to. And so there's this cool community that, based on our earlier conversation, your sister would really like, called uh, Rise Against Hunger. We're going to talk to Rise Against Hunger about how they feed people in not just Orlando, but in other communities around the United States. Mm -hmm. So we'll have a little point that'll be serious in the in the show. And then mom might call in. We've been looking at Doug. My mom's neighbor, Doug, is our uh, announcer guy. And we've been looking at his outfits. And I don't know if I'm going to throw up or laugh, but it's going to be crazy. Uh, Andrew Wang, for fun, plays the guitar. So he and Miranda are going to be our Tonight Show band. Uh -huh. uh, I'm not sure how that's going to go, Does but that have fun. a kazoo. She she has she. she has, we should do that. <laughs> you should. We should do that. We didn't think of that, but we've got. Uh, she has a tambourine for now, but maybe last second costume change. But you know, like it could be like the um, the classroom instruments from is that Jimmy Fallon that does that? Yes, wouldn't that be great? That would be great. Except we try to do it to do it uh, for real. So tickets are ten bucks. Stackybenjamins.com forward slash tour. It's Tuesday night next week. Tuesday, Tuesday night in Orlando. Tuesday night in Orlando. Then two weeks later, we're in Kansas City. And okay. our band, do you know Tracy Phobes, the Penny Pinchin mom? Uh-uh. Tracy is awesome. She's going to be there talking about deals in the Kansas City area. But her son is an 11-year-old guitar phenom. And instead of Andrew and Miranda's our band, we're going to have her 11 year old son is going to be our band at Kansas nice. City. Nice, child labor, way to exploit great. those to oh. the child when you, labor market. When you can pay your band and host his cupcakes, I mean, <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. Kid's going to be all sugared up past his bedtime. Uh, I'm going to jack up a Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's going to be October 9th. Uh, there's a FinTech conference going on in Kansas City. I don't know if you know this, Kansas City's a big FinTech town, a lot of they financial are. companies there. Yeah. And so uh, we're going to have five different FinTechs that are with an accelerator, MBKC Bank there. Um, and we're going to get like to see these uh, things before everybody else sees them. Then okay. two weeks, two weeks and one day later, we're in Detroit, Michigan. Detroit, as they say Detroit, here in Texas. Detroit, Motor City. Yes. And uh, we, uh, we're in fabulous Ferndale, which is a suburb just north of Detroit. Uh, we're at the Go Comedy Improv Theater. By the way, in Kansas City, we're at the Improv. And we're at Go Comedy Improv Theater in, in Ferndale. And um, there we're going to have not only Shannon Kaysan, who might be the best storyteller I've ever heard. Besides, I heard Gwen. my buddy Andy might be there. Andy is going to be there for Marriage, Kids, and Money. Cat mm -hmm. Alford, I don't know if you know Cat. Cat. I do know Cat. Cat will be there. Uh, uh, a popular uh, personality on the radio and on TV in Detroit, uh, Joanne Purton will be there with us. In each of those com each of those cities, by the way, in Kansas City, Joel Goldberg. You you might not know Joel Goldberg. If you live in Kansas City, you know him because he does the pregame and postgame shows for the Kansas City Royals, and ah, he's got a podcast called Rounding the Base. Yes, I definitely don't have anything to do with the Royals no. because. Oh, there it is. Yes. What I is that? My Cardinals flag. My St. Louis Cardinals. Who are the Cardinals? 
I don't know anything. The best baseball team on the face of the planet, Joe. Can I tell you something funny about the about the Cardinals? Uh, uh, so, <laughs> friends of yeah. ours, yes, didn't know there's comedy about the Cardinals. Uh, friends so of ours are are um, that we go. I probably see them. I don't know a couple times a month. We do something with them. Are the Wakas, and that is Mike Waka's mom and dad. Nice friends of ours. So um, jealous. And it's funny some of the stories about. <laughs> this amazing baseball player and his money, which I, which I can't tell you. Let's just put it this way. He makes a lot of money and he asks his mom if he can buy stuff that he can easily afford. Aww. But he always goes and asks his mom first, which is totally awesome. I wish I could tell you more than that. I really like Waka Waka, like, especially because when he goes up to pitch, it's a Waka Waka Waka. Waka <laughs> Waka Waka Waka, yeah, yeah. Yeah, they've never heard that joke before in that family. Of course not, no. It's all brand new. All brand new. First time you've ever heard it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Well, um, I highly encourage people to attend the live tapings of Stag and Benjamin's podcast. I'm assuming they will come out later through the normal channels if you can't make it, right? We haven't decided yet. I hope so. I hope we can. I would love um, to watch it. Yeah, I hope we can. You might be able to listen to it on our uh, podcast channel, but we don't know yet. It, it depends. There's a lot of different brands and people involved and we got to get them there. So the answer is, I hope so. But if you want to be safe, don't be like Gwen and just come to the show. Right. Um, it would be a lot easier if Gwen could come to the show, if you had done it anywhere around Minneapolis. So next year, it's not my fault next year. Next and by year. the way, if, if it goes well, we do want to expand the tour. That's the goal. The goal when we, we got together, we, we actually called, uh, Bloom and asked them if they could help us with the show. And they said, yes, but we rolled out the idea for seven cities. And they said, well, you've never done this before. And we've never done this before. How about if we choose three? And then if that goes well, then we'll do more next year. And we said, that's so that a like a typical advertising deal. Yeah. Well, the funny thing was, was that they were right though. I mean, really we, if I had it to do over again, there were some things that we would have done differently from the very beginning, but you learn, right? Get yeah. out there and you tell people this on the show. Just it's go, out, go out and do try it. it. Yes. Try it. Make the mistakes and do Sometimes it. Sometimes you end up living next to drug dealers and other times you end up earning an extra hundred thousand dollars a year. You know, your mileage may vary. Yes. It could, it's a, like a human roulette wheel. <laughs> Thank goodness it's not a Russian roulette. <laughs> no, that's, that's, that, that's very, very bad. Very bad. Yes. Uh, okay. So um, Dylan says, sounds like it's going to be amazing, Joe. Uh, hope you enjoy the whole process and just have fun. Well, thank you, Dylan. And thanks to everybody for listening and watching except Dylan. Except Dylan. We appreciate you coming over from the Chooseify showing and watching us or to the people who are here before that. We appreciate you ditching the Chooseify live and coming over here instead. It means a lot to us. So People that Gwen you. calls behind your back, true fans. Yes. Thank you to the true, true fans. fans. The true fans of us. Thank you <laughs> for showing. All right, Joe. Thanks for having. Uh, thanks for coming on, and I really appreciate it. And I will see you. We'll next see week. you at lunch. Yes, at come lunch. have lunch with us Friday if you're going to be at FinCon. Come have lunch with Gwen and I. Yeah. It was last year. How many people went to lunch with us? A lot. Gosh, it was like ten. Yeah. We had a big table. It was a lot. Those uh, those uh, lemmings, we call them. The lemmings. I'm really <laughs> sad that we couldn't go to, what was that, pecan place for the barbecue. I know. And so uh, Mindy and Carl went there. Um, Rubbed it in our faces at how good it was, too. Mindy Cheers. from Bigger Pockets went there and then told us, oh, it's great. And by the way, the line is around the block. And you Literally can't, around the block. Yes. So good. It looked great. But we had pecan the Lodge, were great. Right? Pecan Lodge? That what it was? Something. All I know is go to Twisted Root and go don't have the Elvis Presley. I think that's the lesson here. I got the, the Amaretto one. That was really good. It was, I just got vanilla and it was amazing. <laughs> it was so amazing. Joe loves vanilla. Yeah. By the way, and not here's, here's a useless piece of trivia before we go. Did you know that when people say like plain vanilla, have you ever looked at that? process of how they extract vanilla like vanilla yeah. extract it's there's nothing vodka. there but there's nothing vanilla about extracting vanilla like it's hard 
It is so you hard. You literally have to like soak it in vodka in a jar, and that's how you get vanilla extract. It's crazy. And not to mention, like real vanilla is hella expensive and rare. Like, yes. why why is plain vanilla so common that we just say plain vanilla when it's one of the most expensive spices out there? I know one of vanilla. the vanilla got the short end of that colloquialism right there. They did. If, I, if I'm vanilla, I would file a complaint. <laughs> it is it is not fair. Proving again, life is not fair. Once again, it's just not fair. Some people have it good, like chocolate. Other people? <laughs> chocolate gets all the breaks. Vanilla gets shorted. That, that, so that chocolate. And it's in everything, you know? <laughs> it like, is. It has chocolate. Yes. Mm -hmm. By the way, when it comes to chocolate, we could do this all day, guys. We could. So we'll probably wrap it up. But I will tell you this. So I just got back from Europe, uh, which a joke on our show is, did I tell you I've gone to Europe? Because I've said it 9,000 times. <laughs> hey, let me tell you. I went to Europe. I don't know if you know that. But, but I did just get back from Europe. And a funny thing I found that Germans say, and that Germans write, is they say, like, like the waiter would say, oh, this is typical German food. This is typical whatever. And it's funny because we're getting these German chocolates for treats for people. And by the way, the best, the best, um, it, there was a store in Vienna called like, uh, like Austria's Best Souvenirs. We're like, well, it's Austria's Best. We got to go in. Sure. You, have to. Like, oh, you have to. This is the best one. We got to go into that one. So we go in there. Turns out we had to give it one star in TripAdvisor because it was probably third best, fourth best. They're, they're kind of lying. But down the street from the world's best. Advertising, man. Down the street from Austria's best was a was a store called the world's best souvenirs. But like, why would you shop at Austria's best souvenirs when you can go get the world's best souvenirs? You just souvenirs? said the world, yeah. I know. Hello. But they, um, that's what we should just call a podcast, the world's best podcast. Done. There it There's is. There's a bar down the street for me that says they have the city's best happy hour. It's that's not true. A, marketing. <laughs> liars. Marketing. Liars. It's all marketing. But while we're while we're in Austria's best uh, souvenir shop, they have some German candies, and we're just you know picking up some of these things. We got just a couple hours till we got to head for the airport. I can't wait and, to get uh, and on this box, this really kind of ornate box. I have a, no, I don't have one over there. Um, I did, but I don't. Uh, <laughs> this little ornate box with Mozart's picture on it because he lived in Vienna. Um, it said on the thing right below it. It said typical or, or typical Austrian treat. <laughs> And I, I said to Cheryl, I'm like, I bet right now there's Austrian families all over Austria are opening up this package of chocolates. With Mozart. And they're just giggling. The typical, the typical Austrian or German family. Do uh, Austrians slash Germans even giggle? Is that a thing? Um, I thought they were very serious. I think only in the privacy of their own home. Okay. Like what you do inside the privacy of your own home is They've fun. got an image to maintain, right? Yes. Just don't go out on the street and crack a smile or things are bad. I did have a woman and it's funny because I've known some, some German people and um, sometimes they will correct you about stuff. And in a, in a voice that sounds fairly stern. <laughs> so this woman at this hotel, she's asking me, so where are you going next? And I told her where I'm going and she goes, oh, that's pronounced da 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 da. And at first I'm kind of taken aback, but then I see her mouth is a little, you know, she's got like a little smile just right here, <laughs> just on the edges. And, uh, and then she proceeds to tell me I'm pronouncing everything else wrong, which I know I am. But, but, but once I realized very that easy was, language to murder, <laughs> once I realized that she was having fun, it was so much better. Cause at first I was like, Whoa, calm down. It's okay. But no, American German people. Do. German people are, are delightful once you get by they the are. fact that they might not be. <laughs> and on that note, we're going to end this rambling hotness before it goes any further. Send your complaints to Gwen, Germans. Send your complaints to Gwen at one more story. I'm going to give you one more. Yo. So we're sitting at, we're sitting at this, uh, we're sitting at this uh, uh, beer garden. We're actually trying to get into this beer garden and it's full. We don't have a reservation. The, 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 the German waiter rolls his eyes like, I don't have anywhere for you to go. But then he goes like this. He's like, hold on a second. Walks over to these two guys that are at this big booth. Says, hey, uh, do you mind if these people sit down with you? They say, no, we sit down with these guys. They end up staying for about two and a half hours. And I'll leave you with this joke that Tomas told us. 
he said, well, before you two arrived, we were talking about politics and about American politics. And we were wondering how we were wondering how it would go here in Germany if because they're in the middle of their election camp season. They said how it would go if one of our if one of our candidates had the slogan, make Germany great again. Yeah, that probably wouldn't work out so well. <laughs> like how, bad, how bad would that be? That, help. that might that, not that might not be. So we'll leave it on that. Okay. Thanks, Joe. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you. I had a great Good time. luck on Tuesday. Thank you. It's gonna be fun. All right, bye.